this video, I'll be going over some of the shortcuts that are available in OCalc Pro version 5.03. When using OCalc Pro, there are several keyboard shortcuts that can be used to expedite the pole modeling process. This video covers the different groups of the shortcuts and where they can be found. First of all, a full list of all the shortcuts can be found in the OCalc Pro user guide. That user guide can be found under the Help OCalc Pro Help option, which will open up a PDF file with the entire user guide. The first group of shortcuts that I want to look at are those related to unit conversions in OCalc Pro. So for several fields, like if I were to click on this cross arm and then go over to my standard filter, I can see that there is a height attribute that requires a measurement in feet. So this value is currently 37.5 feet. Luckily for the user, OCalc allows for the input of feet and inches. For instance, if we wanted to move this to 38 feet and 4 inches, we can click in this box and type in 38 feet with a single tick mark and 4 inches with a double tick mark and hit enter, and this will convert for us. Additionally, there is a unit conversion tool for feet to meters. This can be accessed by selecting one of the input fields and hitting control U. So if we double click in this field and hit control U, you'll see that you get a tool to convert uh, meters to kilometers. You can also convert from any one of these other units to any unit listed here. So this can be extremely helpful for managing different units. The next group of shortcuts I want to look at are those related to different heights. Probably the most common and well-known shortcut is the one that allows a user to move an object relative to the tip of the pole. Let's stick with this cross arm. I'm going to close my conversion tool. So now our cross arm is at a height of 38.33 feet. So let's say we wanted to move this cross arm a certain distance below the tip of the pole. This can be done using the TIP minus shortcut, which allows a user to put an object a certain distance away from the tip of the pole. So let's say we wanted to move this one foot below the tip of the pole. We could do TIP minus one and hit enter, and it will move our cross arm down to one foot below the tip of the pole. Now this can be used in conjunction with other shortcuts. For instance, I could do TIP minus six inches building off of that last shortcut I showed you, where it'll actually do the conversion for us. What's even easier is that you don't actually need to type in the whole word tip. You can just do T minus and a value, and it will go ahead and accept that. There are some other height shortcuts that can also be useful. One of those is going to be a shortcut that allows us to adjust the height above the ground for a certain portion of an object. So let's say we were looking at this span here. Now this secondary span does just go straight across to what we would assume to be the next pole in the line. But let's say that the next pole in the line was a shorter pole, so the attachment height of this span would actually be lower. We can adjust that value using another shortcut. So I'm going to go to the secondary and down to my data entry window where I have an end drop rise attribute. Here, I can click in this attribute and use the shortcut for height above ground. So you can use two different versions of the shortcut. One is HAGL, where height above the ground level or the ground line is equal to a certain value. So we could say that it's 20. And hit enter. And we can see that the new height above the ground for the opposite end of our secondary span is going to be 20 feet above the ground. The alternate version of that shortcut, if we were to click in the same box, is HA equals, and then whatever the value is, we could say 22, and it will move the opposite end of the secondary span up to that height above the ground. So even though that's an above ground line height that we're entering, by entering it in the end drop rise value, it figures out the conversion for us. Your end drop rise is the adjustment that takes place on the other end of a span. So by using the shortcut, it makes it a lot easier than trying to figure out precisely what the end drop rise is going to be. The next group of height shortcuts that I want to look at are better used for equipment, so I'm going to add some equipment to the pole. I'm just going to go under Transformers and grab a single-phase transformer and drag and drop it to the pole. 
traditionally, in previous versions of OCalc, the height that was used corresponded to the middle of an object. So this value of 29.14 matched up with the center of a transformer. However, to make this a little bit easier for users to keep distances in mind, there are some new shortcuts that allow a user to set the center, the traditional way, the top or the bottom of an object to a particular height. For instance, to use the center, you can just leave this as is, or you can use the C at for the center at 29 and hit enter. So now the very center of that transformer is at 29 feet. However, if you wanted to set the top of the transformer to a certain height to make sure it's a certain distance away from other objects, you can select the transformer, go down to your installation height, and you could use T at for the top is at 29 which will set the top of that object to the entered height. And then you can use B at and the value, which I'm going to use 29 again, to set the bottom of an object to that height. So this allows a user to easily figure out where your spacing is going to be needed. For instance, by setting the bottom of this transformer to 29, we can see that it's intersecting that secondary span. So we might want to go back and change this back to the top is at 29. Now, in relation to these shortcuts are some new ones that have been added to move something in relation to another object. So these shortcuts are related to a reference. To use the reference shortcuts, first we need to set a reference object. So let's make our reference object the lowest span that we have here. So we're going to use the spool insulator that the secondary is on. So what we're going to do is right click on the spool and we're going to go down and set as the reference origin. So this will be our reference object. When you set a reference object, it does get tagged with its height on the pole. So now what we can do is use a couple of shortcuts to move items in relation to that reference. The height shortcut allows us to move an object a certain distance away from whatever the reference object is. So if I were to click on my transformer again and go down to my installation height, let's say I don't quite know where this transformer is going to go, but I need it to at least be two feet away from this reference object. I can click where my installation height is, and I can do REF for the reference object minus two for two feet, and it will put the center of that transformer two feet below where the reference object is. This works for setting objects a certain height above something else as well. You can do REF plus or REF minus. This leads us to our next group of shortcuts, which are all related to rotation. There happens to be a reference shortcut for rotation as well. So when we tag an object as a reference, it's also remembering what that object's rotation is. In the case of the spool, its rotation is zero degrees. So now we can rotate objects relative to the rotation of our reference object. So if I were to select my transformer and go down to my rotation attribute, I can type in REF plus whatever rotation value I want to offset the transformer from my reference object. So if I did 90 degrees, it would move the transformer to the 90 degree side of the pole, which is 90 degrees away from where our reference object sits. Now there can only be one reference object at a time, but if you're finished using the reference object, you can go up under edit to reference origin and you can clear the reference object and it will erase those tags. Now there are other rotation shortcuts as well. To demonstrate those properly, I'm going to take my cross arm and turn it into a single cross arm. We now have a cross arm on one side of the pole and all of my insulators and spans on the same side. Now traditionally when we rotate this cross arm, everything else that's attached to it will rotate as well. So I'm going to take my cross arm, I'm going to go down to my rotation field, and I'm going to type in a value of 180 degrees, which spins everything around. This is because of the parent-child relationship that exists here. So I'm going to do a control Z to undo that. Now, if I wanted to move just this cross arm to the back side of the pole, there is a shortcut to independently rotate an object. So I'm going to select my cross arm and go down to rotation, where I'm going to use the IND shortcut. So IND equals 180 degrees, which will only rotate the cross arm 180 degrees, and that rotation does not carry down to all of the child items. Now, if independently rotating an object is not what you want to do, 
I'm going to do a control Z and set my cross arm back to where it was. You can use another rotation shortcut to change the absolute rotation of an object. So let's say we wanted to rotate some of these spans here without necessarily rotating everything else. Let's say I want these spans to all face 350 degrees. So they'll be moved over to the left 10 degrees. We can either rotate the cross arm or the insulators and all those objects, or we can just force the spans to go in that direction. So I'm going to select one of my spans. I'm going to go down to its rotation. And now if I wrote this, rotate this 350 degrees, in this case it will just go around to 350 degrees. So let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let me rotate my cross arm to the 270 degree side of my pole. And now if I rotate this span 350 degrees, it'll actually end up somewhere over here because that rotation is trickling down. So I can use the absolute rotation shortcut to force the span to face 350 degrees. So I'm going to select my span, go down to rotation, and type ABS equals 350, and it forces the span to go towards 350 degrees. Now if I were to just type in 350 degrees on one of these other spans, it ends up over there, because it's still taking into account the rotation of the parent objects, which is not what I wanted it to do. In addition to changing the absolute rotation to a set value, you can also just add a certain value to the absolute rotation. So I can select one of these spans, go down to rotation, and type ABS with the kind of squiggly line symbol, 180, which will just add 180 degrees to the absolute rotation. So the next group of shortcuts are a little less frequently used. I'm going to put my pole back to where it was. I'm going to control Z a couple times. Now this next group are all related to the wires that are being used. The first of these shortcuts opens the modulus of elasticity calculator. So I'm going to select one of my spans, set my filter to all, and I'm going to go and look for my modulus of elasticity, which is right here. So I can type in MOE equals, and it will open up this tool, which is the modulus of elasticity calculator, where any additional changes can be made. Alternatively, I can do a control Z, set my span back to how it was. There's also a shortcut to adjust the diameter of a span based on its gauge. So I'm going to go and look for my span diameter, which is currently 0.39. I can also populate this based on an AWG or, or gauge. So I can double click in this box, type AWG equals 1, and it will set the diameter to the diameter that's associated with an AWG gauge of size 1. There are also shortcuts to convert diameter to overall circumference. That is just a D equals or DIAM equals shortcut. Also, for radius, there's an R equals or RAD equals, which will essentially just multiply the value by 2. Lastly, these aren't really shortcuts, but more tools that a user can find. One of them is found by selecting an attribute that you can edit. So let's say I did span length. And just double-clicking in that box and hitting Control e this will open up an expression evaluation tool which allows the user to essentially enter a math problem and it will generate a result and populate that result into the field. The last thing that a user can easily access is the calculator tool. The calculator is found in the same way. Just double click in one of these fields and do control F and this will open up a calculator which will also allow you to perform mathematical operations and populate this value. This concludes the shortcuts video. Again, all of these shortcuts can be found in the OCalc Pro user guide.